Okay, so we have two GTX 980 Ti's, which are going to be SLI'd together. We have our pump. We have our chassis, which has already had the radiator installed, as well as the liquid-cooled RAM and the liquid-cooled uh, GPU or the CPU, which is going to then go to the two C GPUs in SLI. And then, of course, we've got these nice uh, white fans here for anywhere else in the case we might need them, like maybe up top or in the back. And, of course, white tubing to connect everything together. And we have our two water cool units for the GTX 980. So let's crack them open and get started. Unwrapping the card itself, we see that there are 13 screws on the underside and three screws on the back. Or, whoops, sorry. Uh, the back, front, whichever end. So we're just going to go ahead and start taking that stuff off. Having unscrewed everything, it just comes right off. I didn't even have to pry. But um, there's some cables here that are still hooked in that I'm going to have to separate. Uh, you can see them there. All things considered, this is a pretty nice cooler. If I actually cared or wanted to use an air cooler, um, the dual fans and the dual radiators and all, pretty neat stuff. A few more screws had to come up so that I could expose everything on the card to the elements. This is what the old placement of the pads looks like. So you can see inside the XSPC water cooling kit case for the GTX 980 and 980Ti, there's a surprising amount of instructional material telling you exactly what to do, which I kind of already did off the cuff because I knew that's what I was going to be doing. Not sure about the back or if I'm going to use a new back or if it's going to be this thing's back. I think this thing actually has its own back plate as well. But yeah, see, blue, black, blue, 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 two blues. And that's it. That's all I have to do in terms of sticky stuff. Let's go. Ah, oh, yeah, now that is a very heavy water block. Very nice looking. It's going to have some great uh, handling. There is no back, so I will have to use the stock back that came with the card. That's fine. Uh, it's just a black base anyway. All right. So uh, our thermal paste will be going there once I scrub it off, and it'll attach to that. Everything will line up nicely. Let's uh, get started on the job of applying the blue and black strips to that, which are right here, I believe. Yep, that's them. Here we go. All right, so there's all our little guys lined up exactly the way they should be. We've cleaned off the thermal paste. Now we're ready to apply some more and just sit this the heat sink down on top of it yeah buddy here we go it's very important that when you are starting to tighten these down that you do from the corners and you don't try to go too rough you just have to tighten very gently down with each corner until you get to a happy place you know once you put the whole thing together it's actually quite beautiful fortunately it's going to be sitting upside down which is uh bit tacky but I do like the way it looks very much very pretty so this is what it looks like once it's put in place We've got the uh, lead coming down and working out like that it's ridiculous I know but the pump is going to be huge so it'll uh, more than make up for the oddity of it all all right card numero dos you know the drill let's start attacking it with a screwdriver into the trash pile with you Now last time I had to unscrew a bunch of stuff, but this time this should just, oh, okay, yeah, cool. You know EVGA, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to just spread the paste all over the chips too, what the hell? All right, let's crack this sucker open. This one actually came with thermal paste. The other one didn't. Okay, that's strange. Not only did this one come with actually two tub, uh, two tubes of thermal paste, but they actually um, didn't slice up the uh, blue pads. They're they're sort of stuck together, uh, and I have to separate them myself manually. Very odd how two <laughs> of the same kits from XSPC have completely different stuff on the inside of them uh, in terms of what they actually look like. Like, these are dark blue on one side, whereas the others were not. It, it, I know it's just the sticky material they use, but weird, right, the inconsistency? I don't mind it. Just, what? I bought them both on the same day. Why would they not be the same pack? Well, 
clearly these are put together by people, and I like that. I respect that you can see the human side of somebody working with this material that I swear feels like the stuff you'd think Gumby's made out of. It's very malleable. <sighs> Leave a message in the comments if you remember what Gumby even was. Are you too young to remember Gumby? I bet you are, you child. Not, not that I'm discriminating against you for being a child. It's fine. It's cool being young and all. You're gonna carry on the next generation. Hm. Hard work, maybe. Probably not. Mostly sitting around saying, Oh, I can't, I can't do anything. The world's against me. Cause I'm young. Yeah, and I feel. We were all there. We were all there once. But now we're not. Those of us who aren't. If you're still there, figure your stuff out. Why are we talking about this? Let's go. You know, I'm actually much happier these strips are bright blue because now I don't have these invisible suckers just showing up everywhere all over my fingers and all over the case. And one even ended up in the PCI Express slot. Why? I also really appreciate just how easily you can just peel these off in mass. They just come right off the main sheet. That's really cool. Ah, darn it. Yeah, that seems good enough. Now, if you're going to get on my case for putting on too much thermal paste, I want to remind you that with GPUs, you want to put a hell of a lot on. Also, if EVGA has taught me anything, it's that this is how you're supposed to do it. I learned it from you, Daddy. I learned it from you! Why shrink wrap it? 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 Why? Now with the first card, I just slapped it right down like that. And that, that I've learned is a mistake. You shouldn't do it that way. Instead, we're going to put this on the box, face side up. we got to have it hanging off the edge like so, and hanging off the edge like so, so that there's room for this metal bit that's jetting out to go... Oh, for Christ! Alright. Here we go. Moment of truth. Are you all going to stay adhered? Am I doing this backwards? No, I'm not. This is correct. Got to line up the holes. Believe me when I say that things are going much, much smoother this time around. So I'm just tightening from each edge, going in a cross formation like you would tightening on your graphics uh, or your uh, CPU. Since this is a GPU, it's like a CPU for graphics, for graphics. As long as one corner it doesn't want to go down all the way, I've noticed that. Weird. And then two that really want to go all the way in. Also weird. Go figure. Let's tap it around. Good boy. I have, I have a little bit of beef with this, with this whole thing. Because you see there's holes here that then get covered up, right? So it's like, you have to, you have to go back and forth and back and forth and figure out which ones you have to screw in, then put it down and screw the others in. It's kind of a train wreck, honestly. Some of these screws don't even have a corresponding hole. Like, how's that supposed to connect? And these two in the middle don't even correspond to anything. They don't even screw in. Good enough, I guess we're done here. Let's shove it in there already. Out of the way, a bottle of alcohol. Okay, so this became a little bit more complicated than I was expecting. I ended up having to put on the top of the computer. So, yeah, it's, uh, this is gonna get messy. <sighs> It really pains me to say this, because I was really happy with how the build was coming along. This is probably, parts-wise, just because it's the most recent, this is the best computer I think I've ever built, because the 256 gigs of RAM plus the, the brand newest, um, you know, uh, um, i7, and then we have the... the MSI motherboard, which has very amazing BIOS, though the motherboard itself is kind of silver, and it's it's a rare, like they only made 999 of them, but... Well, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to say that this was a success, some problems happened. First of all, the outlet 
did not quite reach uh, an angle which allowed it to outlet correctly. Secondly, the loop fought against gravity far too much. Far too much. I did not want it to fight gravity that much. And obviously nothing came of it. So I tried adjusting the speed on the pump, maybe trying to get a little bit of action in there, get some of the air bubbles out. Nada. Nothing worked. Then the motherboard started flickering like crazy, and now I can't get it to turn on. So, my last bit of hope, in that this motherboard might even function anymore, is to connect, well, reconnect the power connectors from the front of the computer to the motherboard. And in order to get to those motherboard pins, I'm going to have to take everything out of this case. Okay. So, basically, uh, we've got water just coming out of everything right now. So, my brilliant solution was to lay it down flat so that the water would have to drain straight out and not touch the motherboard on its way out. But honestly, the moisture was so thick, it got everywhere. The surface tension of distilled water is, like, really fierce, and it feels like it needs to attach to everything, so I'm pretty sure there wasn't a single circuit board that didn't get totally soaked in this process. So, after doing some thorough investigation, and by investigation I mean literally blowing air through the pipes to see what was causing any flow problems, I found this bastard, the Apogee, is actually causing the flow to be interrupted. Now, I don't know why or what the hell's wrong with it, but for some reason, it doesn't matter which direction you're going, it whistles and it slows the amount of uh, 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 water flowing through it, weakening it and spilling water everywhere. And this is why... This thing, okay, having a leak somewhere, is why I lost a $300 power supply. So, these guys, this Apogee right here, you see this unit? It's got that little arrow pointing up and down. If you ever see that, don't buy this. It's $90, it's got a really pretty light, but I'm about to unplug this sucker because I hate it. I hate it so much, and it's it's responsible for so much grief, and so much wasted time, and so much loss, and me potentially getting electrocuted, and messing up my hands, and breaking a lot of stuff, and this guy is entirely responsible for all of this fail that's been happening. It's been this, this apogee for not having air pass through it correctly. I can demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate for you right now. Here, I'm going to demonstrate. Let me find a pipe that's, that's uh, available. All right, so I've got this clear tube here, right? So I've hooked up the clear tube, right? And I'm gonna blow through it and you're gonna hear the sound. I have to blow with all my might and only a little bit of air passes through, right? Same tube, no difference whatsoever, plugged into the RAM cooler, right? I, I blow it and same amount of air coming out of the tube. There's no leak, there's no problems. This, this is fine. This is not fine. This is not okay. This bastard sucks. All right, so bye-bye, old motherboard. You were uh, pretty cool and silver and stuff, but uh, unfortunately you, uh, well, for one, clashed with the white theme I was going for, at, you know, silver, and second, um, you lied about having quad SLI, you only have dual, and, uh, yeah, I'm done with this, I'm done with this thing, it's been, it's gotten soaking wet, and now all we can do is admire how pretty it is, and that's all we can do, because it's, it's gone. And this is the new guy, it's kind of got a white accented, uh, race car feel slash, I don't know, um, the BIOS are not as good, obviously, but it, you know, the other one doesn't, I mean, it's not available anymore, so I figured I'd go ahead and go with this, since it matches the case, and, you know, there we are. Now this time I'm just going to blow into the tube. And yet, 
it's only escaping from from there and it's doing it without wheezing or or making any whistling noises it's not struggling to get the freaking air pass through so this one will do Okay, so I've screwed in the motherboard and I've connected the power wires and the sound wire. Everything's been hooked in again and I've even plugged in that. I've given it a power test just to make sure it works. It does. Everything's great there. The fans came on, the lights came on, everything's fantastic there. So the only thing we have to do now is to route the cooling lines through again, hook in the power, you know, the, the, the GTX 980Ti's and SLI cut a bunch of lines to make sure everything lines up and we're going to be running in some glow-in-the-dark um, red fluid that'll react to the the light whatever I don't really care about that much but yeah cool we're very close I can, I can feel it we're very close to finally being done with this project it's only taken like a month So it turned out the problem that was keeping everything from working was the RAM had gotten wet and was therefore bad. So I've replaced the RAM. So that whole liquid cooling RAM video you saw from me earlier, that apparently screwed everything up. Uh, but now we're good. I've got Windows 10 ready to install and I've set up the four hard drives inside to become a four terabyte RAID 0. So it's four times faster than, you know, the fastest one terabyte solid uh, state hard drive and it's four times the amount of storage space. So that's awesome. It's actually like 3.9. Uh, gigs or terabytes 3.9 terabytes of storage which is a lot of storage and it's really fast so uh yeah gonna install windows 10 on it now here we go all right so got rid of the ram loop put in this i'm gonna put in uh 256 gigs of ddr4 later not right now put in the loop it's facing down so that i can pour stuff in from the top gonna use this water bottle recycling not sponsored by dasani and uh, let's just go ahead and power on and see what happens it's probably not gonna loop at all because, uh, oh, it's bubbling. It's bubbling. Is it looping? It's looping. Huh. Well, that water line's gonna go down, though. Or, yeah, it's not water. But the line's gonna go down. Not, not, not that bad, though. Wow. <laughs> Who knew that re re removing the, uh, the, uh, where is it? The excess PC uh, RAM cooler from the mix was going to make such a difference. It's uh, cool. This is the uh, the aftermath bowl. Put everything inside of it just to squeeze up a little of that good stuff. This is not going to be as efficient as I thought it would be. Maybe I need a funnel. Start pouring it into the top. Don't drink this, you'll die. <laughs> we want to do this very gently. Because if the slightest bit of surface tension forms at the top, it'll spill everywhere. And I've already had that happen once, and I'd care not to repeat it. We're just reaching the crescendo of the air bubble now. There won't be any air left after this is through. And we'll cap it off. I'm seeing it fill up the top of the basin. We go a little over the edge. We'll just pour the rest of this down the sink. I'm sure that's terrible for the environment. That's just a few drops. Goodbye. Okay. Wash that out. Alright, so now we just gotta cap it off and it's gonna get wet. Alright, that's a pretty sealed tube. Now let's see what happens if we sit it upright. Uh, a little scared tube, but let's do it. Alright. I guess air bubbles are a little inescapable. There is a thin one at the top. 
but it's not uh, it's not producing any bubbles in the tube per se. There might be a few, but they're going to even out over time. All right, how's the loop going down? So the way this works is cold tubes are transparent and hot tubes are opaque. So it goes hot to the first GPU, to the second GPU. This is the tiniest tube I think I've ever cut. Then around, I don't even know how I got those to seal honestly, but they did. Then we go here and that goes out the back and then up to the top of the radiator where it gets cooled off. So see, it goes up to the top there. Radiator cools it out, comes out cool. So that's why it's okay for these to touch because they're both cool liquid. They've either been through the radiator or they've been cooled off by this point. So it's okay for them to touch. And then it comes back up right at the top using gravity to pull back down. There it is, bingo, bango, bongo. Nice loop. Awesome sauce. And yes, I know, the lighting is shite. I need to do something about the lighting. Maybe some red lights or something, just anything other than, I think there, there is one tube that's up here, but it's not lighting right now because I have to get um, the cables for it. So I'm gonna have at least one more black light at the top and then maybe some more black lights, uh, I would guess behind the tube maybe, making the entire top of the case glow that color, but it would also shine through the liquid, which is supposed to be fluorescent under black light. Let me turn off the lights, Let's see if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Um, uh, uh, that is, uh, no, <laughs> that's a giant lie. All right, giving it the ultra wide, uh, Rad assume test, I'm getting about 45 frames a second, so I can say that um, it does not perform as well as the Titan Z. But then again, I mean, this is with two GPUs running an SLI, strangely, not performing as well as the Titan Z, which is two GPUs as well, but they're in one box. Um, so yeah, even dividing it up and going SLI is not as effective as the Z. Uh, basically, NVIDIA just needs to make something like the Z on the consumer grade level, possibly in the 1000 line. I know the 1080 was announced and it's also a single core GPU, so you'd have to SLI it if you wanted to have dual core performance. And I can just say right now, without a doubt, that, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just not as good. Single core pro performance, even if you have two cores running an SLI, okay, it's not as good. I don't know if you can see them both there, but they're, they're definitely... Running an SLI and doing the thing, I can show you the settings. And there we go. And Maximize 3 performance is turned on, so... Yep, I've been down this road before and I didn't like it before. I played some Overwatch, had a mostly good experience. There was a street light in one level, it was flickering on and off. Because one of the cards was rendering the light as not casting uh, shadows and the other one was cast was uh, rendering as casting shadows so that discrepancy was flickering back and forth and was very distracting but I suppose for the most part I can't really complain um, uh, I don't think it's gonna replace my workstation but it's gonna be another nice addition I suppose to my uh, collection though if anybody would like to buy it 